the word you hear that cleanses your mind when your mind has been cleansed your life is holy if you are not taught who christ is you cannot live an effective christian life there is no other honor greater than that of sonship worldliness is the trap that enslaves men to the devil relationship with god is a gift fellowship is a choice the true expression of divine love is forgiveness to others what you pursue is an expression of what you desire of the sons of Issachar who had understanding of the times and to know what Israel ought to do stop of the sons of Issachar who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. Amen. So we understand something here that I've explained to you over and over that God operates according to what? Time and season. The operation of God on the earth realm is governed by the principle of time and season. There are things that God will only do in the morning. There are things that God will only do in the night. You need to understand this today. So he says, there was a certain tribe of people called the Issachar. They had understanding of the times and what they had to do. So you need to grow to the point when you understand what does 6 p.m. on earth signify to heaven? What does 6 a.m. in the morning signify to heaven? What happens at this time? One of the strengths of witchcraft is that by this understanding, they launch a lot of attacks against men on earth. Because men do not understand the power of time. Glory be to God. So, when we want to teach about the watches of the day and night, is to make you understand that for you, 3 p.m. is just 3 p.m. But in heaven, 3 p.m. means something. 6 p.m. means something. When you begin to trace the Bible, you notice that, for example, midnight comes a lot often. Meaning that there is something spiritual about midnight. Glory be to God. But there is something spiritual about every hour of the day and the night. So we want to see this now. So we have the understanding that God operates by what? Time and seasons. And so, to understand the way that you can, you can pray all the time. But the truth is that for your prayer to bear speedy fruit, you must have an understanding of times and seasons. If you want your prayers to have what? Speedy, which means that you pray and the prayer bear answers fast. Because when you understand the way this time operates, you can easily get it. It's like I told you that if a man and a woman are, are, are looking for a child, the first thing hospital would tell them is to calculate the woman's ovulation period because a woman cannot get pregnant every time of the month or there is a time which they she can easily get pregnant it is called what ovulation period so when you come to the earth realm there are seas there are seasons for certain things that when you know them and touch them you have a speedy answer glory be to god so let us go to isaiah 62 and verse 7 Luke 18 verse 7. We we'll read these two scriptures and we continue. And give him, take from verse, from verse 6. Okay. I have said, what is the word? Watchmen. Watchmen. Alright. On your walls, O Jerusalem, they shall never hold their peace day or night. Day or night. Now, there is no possibility for them to be praying every day and night. Which means that they must divide themselves according to watches of the day and the night. Let's bring it up again. I have said watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem, they shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent by day or by night. So, and give him no rest till he establishes until he makes Jerusalem a prison on the earth. Now, he said, I have, I have said watchmen. You must understand that every christian is ordained as a watchman or woman over a territory for the purpose of god it can be your family 
it can be your compound it can be your nation and if you must be an effective watchman you must know what happens with the watches of the day there are certain prayer points that must only be prayed at midnight for efficiency that even if you pray them in the afternoon the angel that has to do what you're asking for will only come in the night to do it are you understanding me now so you are a watchman so how come you are a watchman and you do not know the mystery of the watches of the day and the night you don't know what happens in the morning you don't know what happens in the night you need to know these things so there's, there's a watch man that is said but take note that as a Christian you're ordained as a watchman why? because the purpose of God can only gain expression on the earth realm by the intercession of Christians if Christians do not pray God's will will not be done unbelievers cannot pray for the will of God because God does not listen to the prayer of unbelievers or sinners the Bible says the prayer of a sinner is an abomination to the Lord so go on what's to hear our voice but we need to grow to understand the time to make the prayer that will bear the fruit that we need from God or God requires on us so there is a time for the prayer that you must grow to know so I'm praying day and night I should know the time let's go to Luke 18 verse 7 the Lord Jesus said the same thing again about people praying day and night. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out when? Day and night. So you see again that when it comes to prayer, there are some prayers for the day and some prayers for the night. Glory be to God. Now, so I've established the fact that we, we need to understand this. Now, the second reason why we need to understand what this is because remember this the heavenly ordained agency for the answer of prayers is the angelic ministry God answers prayer primarily through angels but now angels have specific time when they come so when you know these watches you know which angel comes at 6 p.m. for example at this hour now which angels are in church now? I will soon tell you. It's those, all those things are in the Bible. It's not like I'm taking it from somewhere here in the Bible. So, let's see um, Luke chapter 1 and verse 5. Luke chapter 1 verse 5. Uh, move ahead, please. Okay. Go to verse 10. According to the custom of the priest's office, okay, and the whole multitude of the people was praying outside at the hour of incense. At which time? Which time is that? Huh? Between 3 and 6 p.m. When the Bible begins to specify time, it's nasty. He says, at the hour of incense, who came? Angel Gabriel. Now, I will show you in two places that Angel Gabriel always came between 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. Let's go. Let's read scripture, please. And the whole multitude of the people were praying. Please go back. Praying at the hour of incense. So, when the Bible begins to specify the time, it wants you to understand that that time plays a role in the encounter. That's why they put time. If the time meant nothing, Bible wouldn't put time. So let's go back. Yes. Continue. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Mm -hmm. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. Let's continue. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid for your prayer is hurt so when God heard the prayer who came angel Gabriel so we see number one proof that God answered prayer through through angels let's go to Daniel chapter Daniel chapter 9 verse 21 Okay, you can read it. 
then while I was speaking in prayer even the man Gabriel whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning being caused to fly swiftly touched me about the time of the evening offering which time? 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. You see two times and the Gabriel comes around 5 to 6 p.m. So it's not a coincidence if it happens twice. Then now we're going to see another angel who comes in the morning. Let's go to Acts chapter 10. I will take from verse 1. Okay, go to verse 3. Okay, well, the devoted man, yes. Continue, continue. A devout man and one who feared God with all his household who gave alms generously to the people. Yes. Verse 3. About the nine, which time? 3 p.m. An angel came and said, Cornelius. Wow. Cornelius, come to go ahead. Your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before God. So when God hears your prayer, he sends an angel every answer of your prayer was brought into your life by angels you may not have seen them for example you may pray for house rent an angel will come and go and touch your uncle and he will call you and give you the money all these things is the work of angels do you understand me if there's nothing that happens like that either angels which are spirits that come from God to assist man in doing the will of God walk on earth and if you see evil it means evil spirits operated behind the scene so angels are always there read the story of Jesus when they were about to kill him an angel appeared to Joseph said take the child and run so you cannot separate the ministry of angels from the destiny of a Christian the ministry of angels is a heavenly strategy to help men fulfill the will of God on earth so it is better when we understand the way they operate we can take advantage by that knowledge and know this time the angels will be operating so we have seen three scriptures that show us that between 3 p.m and 6 p.m angels came are you with me so i have already given a proof now how does god answer prayer through angels that must be clear and these angels sometimes will come in your dream if you see me in your dream, it was not me, it's an angel. I don't have any business doing your dream. But when it comes to your dream, most often you will take the face of a person you love or you respect. Sometimes you can see your mother who is dead in your dream. It's not a witch. It's an angel that took her face to give you a message. And the person's face whom you see will determine the authority of the angel that came. Are you understanding me? So don't take it for granted that I saw this person in my dream. What did they say? Joseph had a dream. He was about to divorce Mary. An angel came in his dream and said, Maria, when you know this thing as a woman, you cannot have marital disappointment. Joseph was about to divorce Mary. An angel came to his dream and said, Maria. So if you're a woman looking for a husband, when you understand prayer, angels will appear to a man's dream and say, Marry this girl. It's simple, it's scriptural. When they were about to kill Jesus, an angel appeared to the dream of Joseph. He said, take the child and run. So you see all over that, through angels, God intervenes. He gives direction to men. He intervenes. He helps them. Now, the reason why it is important to study the watches of the day and the night is because the, the activity of angels on the earth realm is determined by watches of the day and the night there are some angels we have seen already that when it comes to angel gabriel it must be between 3 p.m and 6 p.m even the time where i saw him was between 3 p.m and 6 p.m so i already know that if i'm in prayer in that hour it is easy for me to have an encounter with angel gabriel i will not be praying for him to come we, we don't pray to angels no you pray to god when God answers you, he sends the kind of angel that can carry the answer of your prayer. If there is a prayer for warfare, it will not be angel Gabriel for either it will be Michael or angels that work with Michael because it is war. There are angels for all, there are angels for worship. There are angels who come and they give you songs. There are angels who give you business idea. 
an angel appeared to Jacob and gave him an idea for a business. When he applied the idea, he became prosperous. So angels do this kind of assignment in the life of people. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Has four watches and the night has four watches we're going to begin with the watches of the night because in the economy of spiritual beings evening comes before the day which means you begin to check today by 6 a.m. but spirits start yesterday 6 p.m. Genesis chapter 1 verse 5 he said and evening was and the morning was the first day evening and morning not morning and evening so in the economy of spiritual beings evening comes before morning not after morning you need to make that clear in your mind so can we move now so we start with the watches of the night not so so the first watch is six six p.m. to 9 p.m. Right? This is the first watch of the evening. See, so we're under watches of what? The evening. Now, why do we start with evening? What did I teach you? In the economy of spiritual beings, evening comes before morning. Genesis chapter 1 verse 5. You can read it there for clarity. All right. Let's go to Lamentations 2, verse 19. Lamentations 2 and verse 19. All right, can we read? Arise, cry out when? In the night. In the beginning of the watches, 6 p.m. Pour out your hearts like water before the face of the Lord. Lift your hands toward him for the life of your young children who faint from hunger at the head of every street. So this is the prayer watch for intercession. The best time to intercede for your family is in this prayer watch. 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. So the first thing we have here is what? The prayer of what? Intercession. Lamentations 2, verse 19. So, in this watch now, your, your, your prayer is for... Number one is prayers for intercession. The best time to pray for your children, for God to show them mercy, is at this time. He says, in this prayer watch, is when you pour out your spirit, for the, not for yourself, for the life of your children, for your family. So, this is the prayer watch for what? intercession when I'll go so I'll let you know that from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. you are praying before yourself so understand that from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. you the best time to intercede for any case in your family is between 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. because the angels that watch over this watch over this season are angels who respond only to intercession if you are praying for yourself they don't respond but if you are praying for your wife your children they move very fast are you with me now are you getting it so I, I think now the question will be what kind of angels operate this time the angels of restoration at this hour they are the angels of what restoration that's what the prophet says cry at this watch because the angels of restoration, they will move. They will intervene to help your family. Restoration and help.
Now, do you know that in Jesus' crusades, the time where he always had his healing service is between 6 and 9 p.m. Have you ever known that? All right, let's go. Show me Luke chapter 4, verse 40. Most often, this is when Jesus had the Lord, sorry, the Lord Jesus had his crusades in this period of the evening. Can we read? When the sun was setting, 6 p.m., all those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to him and he laid his hands on every one of them and they were healed. Have you seen that? So one of the highest time for a pastor to pray for members to be healed is having service between 6 and 9 p.m. Because at this hour now, 7 p.m. now, the angels who are in church now are the angels of restoration. So if I do anything to lay my hands on you now, it will be quicker for you to be restored. Because those angels, what their assignment is to restore. He said, pray for your children. Intercession for restoration. If you check most of Jesus' healing crusades, you go and read many scriptures. It was at this time. Between 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. 6 p.m., 9 p.m. He says, in the evening, they're brought. In the evening, brought. Check Apostle Paul. He said, in the evening, they're brought. Something is there. So, that's why in their, in their morning service, they thought, in the evening service, was was a prayer line. If you check their morning service, it was teaching. But in the evening, they begin to pray for the sick. Read everywhere Jesus prayed for the sick, you will see it was the evening. When, when he had like a massive healing crusade, he healed the sick all the time. But when it was a massive crusade, it was evening time. Where people brought their sick people to him, and he will lay his hands on them, and he will heal them all. So, what do we learn therefore here? That this is a watch of what? Alright, let's go to Matthew 14, verse 15. When it was evening, his disciples came to him. This is a deserted place and the hour is already late. Send the mothers away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. Evening again. Alright, so go ahead, you can read. Keep, uh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we won't read all, but I just want to show you that this is the time where he had his. This is the time where he gave them food. So it's a time of provision. Have you learned something now? So there are some specific prayer points. If you want to pray for your children, your family, this is the hour to pray because the angels of restoration wouldn't need to come from heaven because they're already there. But if you're praying this around 12 p.m., your prayer is there, they will come the next day at that time learn today that angels work with time let's move to the next so this is the first watch all right of the night are we okay the second watch now is which time 9 p.m to 12 midnight now it's becoming serious 9 p.m to 12 midnight so something happens in this particular watch that i want you to pay attention to now also, also i also forgot something and in this um anyway no I'll, get, I'll, I'll do it now i'll do it now all right in this prayer watch this one you know what you pray for you pray for revelation pray for what for revelation and spiritual knowledge because this is the first watch of visitation let's see Luke chapter 12 verse 37 to 38 the Bible will give you a little bit of revelation about this blessed are those servants whom the master when he comes will find watching as surely I say to you that he will give himself and have them sit down to eat and will come and serve them. Go ahead. Okay, read. And if he should come in there, who comes in the second watch? The master. What is the second watch? 9 p.m. to 12 midnight. That is why, even if you have to sleep by 12, if you pray between 9 and 10 and you sleep, you will have powerful visions. Because the hour of divine dreams is open from 9 p.m. Job 33, 14 to 18. 
because the darkness of the night begins at 9 p.m. And it is the same period in where dreams are released. Are you understanding me now? So this is where you pray for. If you want to see visions in the night, you must pray at 9 p.m. to 12. Even if it's one hour and you sleep, you will see powerful vision. So this is the hour where you make supplication unto God to have spiritual knowledge. Lord, what is happening in my life? Why can't I get married? Why am I having trouble in my business? What is wrong with my health? When you pray in this hour, you are now activating revelation to come to you. So this is the hour of what? Revelation. He says the master will come and he will serve. To serve means he will show, give you something. He will show you and he gives you revelation. So if you are looking to know things about your life, the best time to pray for revelation is, is which time? 9 p.m.? So we now go to the third watch of the night. What is the time? 12 midnight to... Now, listen to me very well. This is the most important watch of the night and the day. Because every new day begins at 12 midnight. This is when you close the night and you open the day. So this midnight watch becomes one of the most important watches. Let us see Judges 16 verse 3. I'm going to show you that this watch is the watch for what? Warfare. This is when you engage in warfare prayers. And Samson lay to midnight. He was sleeping to midnight. At midnight he woke up. Between midnight and 3 a.m. Look at his walk. He went and carried the city gate. And Bible says that you shall carry, you shall possess the gates of your enemies. So 12 midnight to 3 a.m. is the prayer watch for what? Warfare, spiritual warfare. This is the watch where you engage spiritual forces. Why? Because the activities of evil is highest at this time. Every witchcraft that operates, operates at this hour. No matter, listen to me, witchcraft manifests in the daytime but was planted in the night. This is the time. There is nothing, no, every witchcraft. So the first thing about this was is a prayer, is a watch for what? For warfare. Second scripture, Acts 16.25. Let us see what happened there. Acts 16.25. What happened there in Acts 16.25? He said, at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and praising, and there was what? An earthquake. So Paul and Silas began from 12 midnight to 3 a.m. And God intervened. Now, when they were, if you go to the next verse, it says there was an earthquake, the prison doors were open. So, when you want to pray for deliverance, you must start praying by 12 midnight to 3 a.m. Because the angels of warfare in heaven operate best at this season. So, this is the season for what? Spiritual warfare. At this hour, you attack Satan, attack the marine kingdom. All those who attack, you attack them. Because you have a guarantee of an angelic assistance immediately. Don't also forget that this is the hour when witches operate. Let us see First Kings three twenty. That's when you have to do warfare here. The easiest time that it will sleep with you your dream and give you food is at, is between twelve and three. In case you don't know, it is hard to sleep in the afternoon and they sleep with you. It's very rare. It happens much in the night between twelve and three a.m. And she arose at midnight. You see witchcraft. And exchange children at midnight. So those who sleep at midnight facilitate the work of Satan in their destiny and their family. While men sleep, at which time? At midnight. The devil won't come at 9 p.m. No. 9 p.m. They are by 12 midnight. They know that a new day is open, so they come to attack. The psalm says the terror that walks by night. Are you understanding me now? So this eye is important. So this is an hour to pray for deliverance. And number two, judge men on your enemies. You must pray judgment at this hour. You must not, you may, you should pray judgment. Let us see Exodus 11 verse 4. And Moses said, Thus said the Lord, about midnight I will go into the midst of Egypt. So, so go to verse 12 verse 29. And it came to pass at midnight that the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. At which time? So it's a time to pray for judgment. Now, Egyptians had enslaved Israelites for 430 years. God judged them by
by midnight. And God told Moses, between midnight and 3 a.m., judgment will move in the land. So the highest time to pray for judgment on the wicked and their enemies is between midnight and 3 a.m. That is the hour when the angels of what? Warfare. Who operate with angel Michael, they walk best at this time. Because, you know, in heaven, it's like they have gates. And angels leave the gates at a specific time. John 5, 4 says there was an angel who came at a particular time to stir the water. Not any time, a particular time. The truth is this. You can never have permanent victory in spiritual warfare if you don't engage evil forces at midnight to 3 a.m. I'm telling you, you will never. No matter the prayer line you enter, no matter who pray for you, if you don't pray between 12 and midnight, you can't have permanent victory. If you must overcome spiritual wife, spiritual husband, seeing death during the dream, 12 to mid, midnight to 3, you must be up praying. Even if you don't do it every day, at least three times a week, watch over that period. Why? There are some things happening in your life that you will never see. It's because the, the hour of revelation is, will come 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Like me, if I pray, 3 a.m. I sleep. 4, 5, 6, I must see something. What I was praying for, fighting for, I see that time. So, this is the time for warfare. Now, in case you don't know this, the highest time to break the power of marital delay is to pray in this hour. If you are believing God for marriage as a woman, if you don't pray between 12 and midnight and 3 a.m., you don't know. Okay, let us see Ruth 3 verse 8. How did Ruth, who was a widow, get married? Ruth was an old woman whose husband was dead. And it came to pass at which time? At midnight. That the man was afraid and turned himself. And behold, a woman lay at his feet. This when Boaz saw Ruth and said, I will marry you at midnight. So midnight is the hour where you battle the forces that is turning the heart of your fiance away from you. Even wives. A woman who does not watch, say, I don't know, my husband does not like me. I've told you this time and time again. The greatest thing that Satan attacks on earth is marriage. You will really be foolish to think that Satan will not attack your marriage. It means you are, you are mad. Satan will make your husband hate you. He will make your wife hate you. I don't know, my husband. And when you are carnal, you only want to talk. And she don't want to talk. She don't want to talk. She don't want to talk. Talk, talk does not handle spirits. Pray. And she don't want to talk. For about two months now, the way you look me, stop that nonsense. Pray. And sometimes when you see to talk, the demons now manipulate him in anger. He becomes something else. Listen, daughters of Zion, learn this today. You do not address marital issues by complaint, but by prayer. If you complain, it won't change. Stop complaining. Stop talking. Pray. Pray. Let your husband sleep. 12 midnight, you are up. Don't shout and disturb him. Look for someone in the house and pray. And come back and sleep. I'm telling you, do that for one month. You'll see a change. When you engage the powers manipulating your husband against you, that is all. That is all. But unfortunately today, it's a lot of talk. It's a lot of talk. Move, talk, move, talk. This talk, talk, talk. Canada people talk a lot. They feel like they must talk. No, I want air in my mind. Go and pray. Go and pray. I'm speaking to wives now. I'm serious. You, now, you need to pray. Not, I want air in my mind. Something they me. Go and pray. Before you talk to your husband for one hour, pray for three hours. You start talking, you start talking foolishness because you did not come under the spirit of God before you spoke. So you yourself, you had a good thing to say, but you came under the manipulation of the spirit of anger. So you now say, because you never behave like a dog. Huh? The man say, you call me dog. I don't mean I say dog. I mean I say, you start explaining. I mean I say, I mean I say, because you know, pray. Do you know that Satan can borrow your mouth and speak and go? He borrowed the mouth of Peter and spoke and left. She just said, Satan, stop talking to this man. But when you pray as a husband or wife, I'm telling you, Satan cannot use your mouth to talk. Don't you see that it's easy for, okay, husband or wake up wife in the night, move talk. Why can't you look and say, move pray? They can sit for five hours arguing who was right, who was wrong. They can't pray for five minutes. He showed you that they, are, they have all fallen in the spirit. 
Just hold and say, let us pray. Some things that you want to talk, the Holy Spirit will make your partner understand when you pray. Just say, give me a hand, we'll pray. In the midst of a quarrel, we'll pray one hour. You people will stop quarreling because you know that any quarrel is one hour prayer. You say, no, more no quarrel. I am praying that I'm no quarrel. Very soon, we'll talk. You will send messages from morning to evening. But you can't pray. Listen to me. As long as your prayer life is dropping, you are losing ground in your family, your marriage, or your territory. Listen to me today. Anytime you're, you are losing spiritual ground, because what strengthens, solidifies your place of authority in your territory is your prayer life. For business, I don't know. I want to see, I want to see my uncle. I want to see, eh, pray first for me. Pray first. When you pray at this hour, any person you see in the daytime will give you what you ask for. Pray first in that time. So you see, midnight is time you pray. So number one you pray for deliverance right you pray for deliverance number two you pray for judgment on your enemies number three you engage praises to declare the faithfulness of God one of the highest time to praise God is midnight Psalms 119 verse 62 he said at midnight will I arise to declare your faithfulness midnight because of the righteous judgment can we see that scripture please at midnight I will arise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgment. At midnight I will arise at this hour. Give us new kingdoms, please. This is the hour where you arise. And you give God praise. Because of what? So, the kind of praise there is not a praise of worship. It's a praise of warfare. So you literally and say, Father, thank you because we are a man of war. Thank you because you have slain my enemies. Thank you because they came in one way and have gone back in seven others. Thank you because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Thank you because they gathered against me, you scattered them. Thank you because you are my shield and my buckler. You are my rock, my refuge. For your name is a strong tower in their heights. This is how you are moving at that night. When you are talking like that, you are engaging these angels to fight. Because there are the angels of warfare answer only two things. Prayer and praise. They don't respond to tears. Either you pray or you are praising and they move. But when it comes to territorial battle, you don't pray, you praise. When you find out that somebody is threatening your place in your marriage, your family, your business, don't pray. At midnight, praise God. If you can't praise, if you can't sing, put song on your phone, play it and just be dancing. That's the hour for that. So the fourth watch of the night is what? Three a.m. to six a.m. All right. Okay. So let's move ahead. Can we move ahead now? What do you pray for at this prayer watch? Shall I tell you? It's very powerful. This is the prayer watch when number one, you secure the mercy of God. Now, now, now you pray for mercy. How do we know this? Lamentations 3, 22, 23. His mercies are new every... So the, mercy, the angel of mercy come on the earth realm by 3 a.m. and they return by 6 a.m. Those who wake up around 7, 8, they have missed mercy for the day. What I'm saying, you may not believe it, but I'll show you a scripture now to open your eye. Let's see Lamentations 3, 22, 23 first. Then we'll show, I'll show you a scripture. They are new every... Take on verse 22, okay? Okay, which, okay just on verse 22, all right? Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. So, his mercy stop off from being consumed. So, no matter the evil that wants to consume you in the daytime, if you receive mercy in the morning, that evil cannot consume you. There is no accident. There's, no matter what they are planned, it won't work. So, the, let's see the next verse, please. His mercy, we are not consumed. They are new when? So... When does the angel of mercy come to the other end? The fourth watch, 3 a.m. 
Now, I said something. I said that this end just go back between six, seven, eight. Let me prove it to you. Don't forget that the mercy of God, the physical representation of God's mercy is what was called manna. The Bible says, when the manna came, manna came between 3 and 6 a.m. You see, immediately sun came at manna melted. Exodus 16, 21. You can see there. So when you wake up at 8 o'clock, you are too late to receive mercy for the day. So every day between 3 and 6, you must pray even 15 minutes before you sleep back. Even if you wake up to your renewal, say, Father, thank you for mercy before you sleep because this is the season to secure mercy. This time. You secure mercy this time. No matter how you feel to sleep, you must pray at least 10, 15 minutes in this watch. I don't say at least for me, it should be one hour, but at least 15 minutes. Just father, and what is your prayer point? I receive that you sleep back. You have secured the day. Are you with me? So, still in this same prayer watch, Number two, this is when you secure the blessings for the day. You secure mercy. He says you shall be blessed when you go out. And in those days, people went out at 6 a.m. So they had to receive the blessing before that time. Let us see Genesis 32, verse 26 and 29. Do you know the story of the angel who fought with Jacob? The angel came which time? The angel came for evening. They fight so they three around three three to six. The angel said, Yeah, bring it up, please. Thank you, Mija. Thank you. Let me go for the day. So now between five and six days. The angel said, and if it remain, sun no get for me, don't me for it. I got this so callous. The angel said, I need to go. Sun does not have to meet me on earth because other angels have to come. Jacob said, I'm not going anywhere. But he said to him, I will not let you go until you bless me. Angel is not captured. And, and this angel does not listen it is a law this angel does not have to meet with the son on earth he is you know he will disobey God he has to move out now he prays with, let's see it Jacob holds him now this is what I love here I will not let you go until you bless me 27 he said to him what's your name he said Jacob 28 he said to him your name shall not be longer be called Jacob but Israel for I have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed verse 29 and then Jacob asked him saying tell me your name since I don't know why he asked me and he blessed him there look at this so the time to contend for a blessing is which time 3 to 6 a.m. father I must have a job I must have a job because you know that the angel of mercy wants to run so you hold him bless me or some will catch you here You contend for blessings. You, you are looking for a job. Listen to me. By, by 12 to 3 midnight, what are you doing? You are fighting powers that don't want you to have a job. You are not praying for a job. You are fighting resistance. They read to, to Father, I must have a job. If you are looking for a visa, the highest time to pray is 3 to 6 a.m. Because that's when you hold the angel of mercy and blessing. So we know that. And don't forget, this is where the status of Jacob was changed. So if you are believing God for a change of status on earth, for a promotion, how did he pray? He was promoted from Jacob to Israel. Every man of God who wants church to grow or to grow in the spirit prays at this time. Listen to me. Any person that says he heard the name of a church, I will always ask him at which time. Because I know that these angels that come to give names of ministry operate between 3 and 6 a.m. They changed his name at that time. Are you with me now? So, you engage the angels of mercy to say two things to secure what? Mercy and a blessing for the day. Can I shock you? There is a difference between, sit down brothers, between securing mercy and blessing. There are people who have mercy for the day, but have no blessing that day. To have mercy means no, no bad thing not happen for you for that day. But since you don't get blessing, no good thing not happen. Mercy stops evil from happening to you, but blessing makes good to happen. For example, many of you today, you see today, you have not had accident, nothing happened now, but also no good thing has happened in your life. If I, if I ask you that, what happened today, nothing not happened. 
There does not be nobody even say you credit by mistake and say I'm Mr. Maker. Stand and back. Even by me, like, like nobody. So, but if you are still alive at this hour today, it means to truly you had mercy today. Those who didn't have mercy today, they died today. Not that God hated them. It is the it is it said, by his mercy we are not consumed. So no accident, nothing. But yet, to today, you are still poor. Not you. Somebody is still poor. Because you, sh- you are not going to be poor. So, you need to secure mercy. Don't go say, okay, Father, 3 and 3 and pray 3 and Father, give me mercy, 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 mercy. You go back and sleep. Thank you, Lord. No. Jacob held the angel. You contain. So, depending on what you want to pray for, discipline your sleeping life. Sometimes, me, I sleep, I woke up at 2. I think I'm three to six. Sometimes I pray eleven to three. I sleep at three. I wake up at nine. So it depends on what I want to pray. I locate the season to pray for it. If it is warfare, six eight I don't sleep. Put alarm eleven. I don't woke up. I think I'm twelve to three. Three I just sleep back. Why? Because I want to see dream. Are you understanding me now? So we are done with the watches of the night, right? The first watch is what intercession. Who is the angel in that watch? Angel of restoration. The second watch is for what? Warfare. Who is the angel? Angel of warfare. Deliverance. Third watch is? Huh? No. Second watch is the angel of revelation. Is that, am I correct? Yeah. Yes. Third watch is the angel of warfare. What do you pray there? Judgment. At this time, you don't pray for, Lord, show me your glory. You don't pray that 12 midnight. Any power fighting me, scatter. It's judgment hour. Now, from this prayer, watch now. 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. What do you pray for? Mercy. And two things. Mercy and blessing. Which means mercy and favor. Favor is blessing. So, if I have mercy, mercy is a shield that withholds, that, that, that preserves me from evil. But I need favor or the blessing for good things to come. So, while mercy will stop bad things from happening, favor will make good things happen. Can we go to the watches of the day? It will be the first watch of the day, therefore. 6 a.m. to 9, 9, 9 a.m. Now, it's getting interesting now. I'm going to show you some things. So, should we say fifth watch or first watch of the day? First watch of the day. All right. So the question is, what do you pray at this watch? It's very interesting and very powerful, I tell you the truth. At this watch, this is the watch of spiritual empowerment and spiritual gift. This is when they give you gift of the Spirit. If you want to prophesy, you want to heal the sick, this is when you, you wait on God. Because the angel that distributes the gift of the Spirit operates at this hour. Let's see, Acts chapter 2. Can I ask you a question? In the day of Pentecost, when did the Holy Ghost come? At which time? We will see the time now. Acts chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. We will see the time now. When it asked in verse 2, he said the Holy Ghost came, right? In verse 2. In verse, 15, verse 13, people said they were drunk. 15, Peter says, we are not drunk as you think. For it is only the third hour of the... So what's to be the time? 9 a.m. Holy Ghost has already come. So the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. This is when you wait on God. Can I tell you something? The highest time to see good vision is between 6 and 9 a.m. Yet I tell you. For this one now, I'm at school. Yet I tell you. Where you can see visions of heaven, angels is this time. Because the, the, the gates are open. He said, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was at this hour. 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. So, this is a very powerful time in the life of of every should I say every? Of any person that calls on God, you know, whoever calls on God and is saying that, okay, I'm a believer in God. 
this time is a time when you should understand that you have to wait on him why because what will he do for you an outpouring of the spirit so this is a watch of what spiritual empowerment and the release of spiritual gifts you can write that like that Now, I'm showing you how to wait on God to be more effective. So, the angels that move with spiritual gifts, you often meet them at this time. Mark my words. That is what you see is that most often at this hour, we have gone to work. The reason why many of us miss encounter is that 6 a.m. we go work. It's one of the highest time to see vision is this time. One of the highest times that me I sleep is between 6 and 9. That's my sleeping time even. 6 and 9. Even on Sunday, I finish prayer. I sleep at 5.30. 8, I'm up. Sunday service, oh, I sleep. I'm, because only one hour, I can see the whole service at that time. But in the night, there is so much darkness that you can't see vision. You have to fight spiritual forces. So this is the hour where you secure spiritual gifts. So if you truly want to walk in the spirit and receive a kind of impartation of spiritual gift when should you wait on god let's see psalms 2 verse 7 to 9 i will declare the decree of the lord he has said to me you are my son today i have begotten you verse 8 ask of me and i will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession verse 9 you shall break them with a rod of iron he said god says ask me or give you nations which time Show me Malachi 4 verse 2. Look at this revelation now. Let me show you one of the best times to pray for healing. If you are praying for yourself for healing. Can you read that scripture please? Eh? But on you, the son of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings. So, the hour of the highest time to pray for healing is between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. If you are praying for yourself to be healed, make sure you pray between this time. And sometimes you can pray this prayer walking outside under the sun. It's also a spiritual law, but I'll teach you that one day. Are you following me now? Do you know that in, um, in science, they'll tell you that all vitam most vitamins in the body of a man come from the sun? What is vitamin B, vitamin whatever? They, they say a sun, they say sun from this time to this time, give this particular vitamin. So every time of the day, the rays of the sun impart a different kind of vitamin, and vitamins are necessary for your body. You see, you are always tired, you are always weak. The problem is lack of some vitamins. Your bones are weak, they'll tell you vitamin. I think it's calcium or vitamin C or something. Vitamin B is for strength. Your nerves. Alright? So this time this first watch you engage what the outpouring of the holy ghost you pray at this time for spiritual empowerment lord open my eyes to prophesy this is the time to pray that prayer all right watch of the day can we continue okay let us see exodus chapter 12 verse 35 to 36 and i'll show you a very strong mystery in this one now the children of israel had done according to the word of moses and they had asked from the Egyptians articles of silver, of gold, and of clothing. Yes. And the Lord had given them people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they granted them what they requested. Then they plotted the Egyptians. <laughs> mm -hmm. 37. 
then the children join it. All right, so there's something in that place. When they actually did this asking, it was between 9 a.m. and 12 a.m., 12 noon. I want to show you something very important, which many of us will take for granted, about this specific prayer watch. Don't forget this, that this is the time when... So if you are trying to speak to your helpers, after you pray, you call them in between 9 and 12. Listen to me very well. This is the time where the Egyptians went. Some of you are calling your helper in the night. Or you call him at seven where his eyes are not clear from sleep. This is the time. Exodus 35, 36. Sorry, the, the scripture is Exodus. They went and demanded so this is a time where you actually engage the angels of favor he said the Lord gave them favor so we engage what? The angels of favor you pray here yeah? if your interview falls in this hour <laughs> thank God for you you already got in the visa because when you have this understanding you move with the angel of favor you will be with you at that hour amen now, as I repeat, I said, I'm not asking you to pray to angels. You engage them. But also now, there is also a mystery of this watch. This watch is just a sideline expo I'm giving you. This is not the real thing for this prayer watch. It's just that you can pray for favor. But what is this watch for? I want to show you something. In this prayer watch, eh, at which time was Jesus condemned to die? Eh? Which time? No, he was crucified at 12. When was he judged? Nine. So this is the which period for what? Ah, will somebody give me an answer? This is the judgment of the flesh. This is where you pray against sin, bitterness, anger, immorality. This is where you engage God for the partition of righteousness and holiness. So this one of favor is just that's what expo that one you can use it but much more in this hour if you have issues of you want to handle with, with your flesh between 9 and 12 is when you handle them because jesus was judged in this hour and put on the cross by 12. so the whole process of that judgment all right so in partition of what righteousness and show me psalms 37 verse 6 in partition of righteousness and holiness you pray for a judgment on the flesh the works of the flesh he shall bring forth your righteousness at which time as a loon and your justice as the noonday he's telling you when that happens let's see matthew matthew 20 uh what is that 20 let's see mark 15 25 and matthew 27 45. now it was there when they did what they crucified him so jesus was put on the cross at 9 a.m they judged him from 6 to 9. At the third hour, at 9 a.m., they put him on the cross. He stayed on the cross for 6 hours. From 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So we see that between 9 and 12 is when judged men on the flesh. Because on the cross, Jesus was being judged for our sins. When you are overcome by sin, you engage 9 to 12. This is when you engage the power of the cross. Never forget this. The blood of Jesus. I must overcome anger. I must overcome pride. So, said that you engage the angels of favor, right? You engage what? Son of righteousness. And number three, you engage the power of the cross of Jesus Christ at this time. Do you understand it now? So, if you have issues of weaknesses in your flesh, handle it in prayer this time. You want to overcome anger? This is when to pray for against anger. He's going to pray against pride because he says, and he was crucified at the ninth, at the third hour, which is 9 a.m. I wish in Matthew 27, 45, I think he says the same thing. Now, from the seed hour, this one is now from 12, we'll go, to, we'll go, to, we'll go to this one later. From a seed, from 12 o'clock to 3 p.m., say there was darkness. We'll explain that one later. So we are still at this one. He says, he was crucified at what? The ninth hour. Glory be to God. 
So when do you engage the power of the cross? The second watch of the day. When do you engage the angels of favor? Don't forget the angels of mercy is 3 a.m. Angels of favor, 9 a.m. to 12 a.m. But much more, the angels that truly walk in this period are angels of that help crucify your flesh. This is where you pray against anger. Remember, don't pray to angels. Pray to who? He will send angels. Please, never pray. If you pray to angels, you'll be initiated into witchcraft. Yes, because demons will manifest as angels and deceive you. Pray to God. Don't pray. Never pray and call the name of any angel. Pray to God. Father, save me. Father, give me favor. He Don't say angel of favor. Don't say, Father, give me favor. He will send the angel. Your own is to talk to God. Angels respond to Papa God, not to you. I hope that is clear. I'm going to show you some mysteries here. Glory be to the Most High God. All right, so the third watch, right? So let us see Matthew 27 45. He has a mystery there about this watch. Now, from the seed hour unto the ninth hour, there was darkness over the, all the land. From the seed hour to the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. Listen to me. 12 midnight to 3 a.m. and 12 afternoon to 3 p.m. at the highest spiritual time of every day. Are you following me very well? So, the first thing in this phase is that you engage the angels of preservation because there is a lot of evil that seeks to find expression at that very hour. Let's see Psalms 91. What verse is that? Psalms 91, verse 5. Verse 5 and verse 6. Verse 5 and verse 6. Let's read there. Shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. Which time? Next verse. Nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the distortion that lays waste at. So it says, at noonday, there is a particular thing. When you become spiritual, you understand something. Check anytime you hear there was an accident in Cameroon. Check the time. Accidents between 12 and 3 midnight, people die a lot. An accident in the afternoon between 12 and 3 p.m., people die a lot. Just begin to check this since you see it. It says there is a destruction that comes at noonday. There is a specific angel of darkness that comes at noonday to destroy. First thing you do, that's the time you pray for preservation for your family. So that anything you, do, you could not catch in the night, you will catch it at that time. You pray for preservation. Are you following me, child of God? So if you want to pray prayers for preservation, is this hour. Amen. So the first thing there is that you engage the angels of what? Preservation. Then the second thing also in this hour which I, I love is that if you read scripture consistently, you will understand that this is a specific time of the day when there are, let us see Acts chapter 10, scripture go mm -hmm. verse 9 okay Peter went up to pray which time at 12 6 hours 12 o'clock the next day as they went on the journey and drew near the city Peter went up on the house top to pray about the seed hour verse 10 then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. Which time? 12 to 3. Thank you. So, you engage spiritual visitations between 12 and 3 p.m. Number one, you engage the angels of what? Preservation. Number two, spiritual visitation. So, the trance that Peter saw was in between 12 in the afternoon to 3 p.m. So, in as much as darkness comes on that time, there is also angels of visitation. Let me tell you something. Any dream you dream between 12 and 3, take it serious, it is true. And listen to me. Have you, let me give you 
should I say this Lord well let me just give you a bit if listen do you know that most often when you dream your dream is always in the night I don't mean that you dream I mean inside your dream well it is always night have you realized that that in your dream well it is always night check it 90% of your dream is always in the night even if you start in the day you always end somehow you enter night it's darkness but let me tell you the best time to have clarity of dream at the time Bible says at the seat hour you went to pray so anytime you engage God in prayer at this hour so this is the hour to make inquiry about your destiny you inquire from God then you get in a trance Lord which country will I travel to Bam, you see a trance go to America Lord, who will I marry? A trance will come. So you engage God for inquiry because the angels of visitation come at this hour. I didn't say the angels of intervention. They may not come and help you. They only come and show you revelation and go back. Are you with me now? Is it okay? Do you understand that one? So you engage at that hour. So let's move the fourth watch of the day. 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. <laughs> I'll, I'll show you some mysteries in this one. In this watch, this is when you pray to dedicate yourself to the service of God. That's why they call it, they call this one the watch of sacrifice. You, even in, remember, incense, when you are giving yourself for the service of God. This is when you pray against anything that is resisting your commitment to God. For example, you no longer come to church. You no longer pray. Handle it between 3 and 6 p.m. The watch of what? Sacrifice. Now we're going to run through some scriptures here quite fast now. <laughs> okay, let us see Acts chapter 3 verse 1. Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. Being which time? Nine hours. They went to pray. To do what? To commit themselves to the Lord. Let's go to Acts chapter 16. Uh, is that it? Yes. Acts chapter 16. I just want to go to the story of Apostle Paul. When he went to pray by, I think by the same time. Okay. Verse 13. And 14. And this is a very powerful thing you will see there. And on the Sabbath day, we went out on the city. This is Saturday. Where prayer was customarily made. At which time? It's in the evening. And spoke to the women who we met there. So they went out to pray between 3 and 6 p.m. That's when, in the Jewish tradition, they pray at 3 to 6 p.m. So they went out to pray, all right? And on, yes, go ahead, please. The next verse is, they met a woman. Now a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Tetra, and the Lord opened her heart to a head to hear the things spoken by Paul. This woman became the greatest helper of Paul. So, when do you pray for destiny helpers? Talk to me 3 to 6 p.m. This is when you engage the prayer for destiny helpers because this is the period where God opens the heart of people to listen to you. I don't know if you understand me here. For example, you have your uncle in America, it's hard to you. This is when you pray, Father, touch my uncle to help me. This is when you mention his name in prayer. Because the angels that release destiny help us come at this hour. The first one I gave was what? Offering to God, right? I will still talk about, I'm just giving you all, but I will still explain all, please. I'm just giving you like that, but we will explain all. So I'm just trying to make it because of time. So, we have seen these two scriptures already. Let's see Luke chapter 1, verse, I think we just read it now about Zechariah, all right, in verse 8 to 11, we see the same thing there. So it was that while he was serving as priest before God in the order of his division, next verse, who came unto him? According to the custom of the priesthood, his Lord felt, now look at something, his Lord felt to burn incense when he went to the temple of the Lord, which means they had many pastors in church. And this is what they do. They write the names of all the pastors. You understand? And they write numbers. If you pick number one, you pray between six and nine. So he went and picked number four to pray between three and six. 
as he went to pray, he met Angel Gabriel. Let's see the next scripture. He, he called it the time of the evening sacrifice. Let us see it. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. What is incense? Offering yourself to God as a living sacrifice. This is when you offer yourself to God. Father, use me for your glory. I submit to your power. You offer yourself. You give yourself for the service of God. This is when you pray prayers of what? Dedication. Where you offer yourself to God as what? A living sacrifice. Are you listening to me now? chapter 9 verse 21 yet while I was speaking in prayer the man Gabriel whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning being caused being what when you read Bible eh, to understand read slowly don't read fast you understand being caused to fly swiftly question what caused him to fly swiftly the prayers of Daniel the swiftness of the flight of your angel is a function of your consistency in prayer. Some of you, your angel is still in, yeah, he, he's coming to Kumba. He's right around Bumiebe. Now that's a joke, but it's true. So, this is how your angel is walking. Being caused to fly, what do you mean of the word swiftly? Fast. When did he reach? So, we don't know when this angel left heaven. But he arrived at three, around 5 p.m. Around the time of the evening offering, he came. So maybe the angel was, was flying slowly. Daniel prayed, he came fast. That's why you need to learn the mystery of praying. Don't be praying, my father, my father, pray well. Know that the delay of the answer of your prayer may be caused by your laxity in prayer. When you are consistent in prayer, your prayer gives speed to your angel. That's the scripture there. Being caused to fight swiftly. The other angel said to Daniel, from the day you opened your mouth to pray, I was sent to answer you. But the priest of Pesah helped me. But the reason why I came is because though I delayed, you were still praying. When you pray for a matter, you don't see it, you stop praying. Maybe the angel was half road, you will turn back and go in back. That's why one of the laws of prayer is not just asking, it's being consistent. Ask it today. Ask him tomorrow. I already ask him. When you are consistent in prayer, you are supplying, you are causing your angel to fly swiftly. Swift means speed. Are you doing anything here? Now, one of the most, one of the greatest <coughs> things that a prophet has done is that he calls for fire, like Elijah. Amen. But I want to show you today that Elijah calling for fire was more of sense than power. It was not power. It was says he knew what. Let's go to First Kings eighteen, take one verse thirty-four. Elijah and the false prophets went to the mountain in the morning. He said they should go first. They began praying from nine a.m. to afternoon. Around two three, Elijah came and said, "Pour water on the altar." I mean, you're calling for fire. He said, "Pour water." They pour water three times. Verse 35. So the water ran all around the altar and he also filled the trench with water. He put water on the altar and went back and sat down. Verse 36. And it came to pass at the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said lord god of abraham isaac and israel let it be known this day that you're, you are god in israel and i'm your servant and that i have done this thing at your word and verse 37 hear me oh lord hear me these people may know that you send me you are the lord god and that you have turned your hearts back again verse 38 then the fire of the lord came bible says elijah came since 9 a.m didn't pray around afternoon he arranged his altar and went back and sat down. 
by 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., he came. He knew that when God sees sacrifice, God sent fire. They don't eat meat in heaven. Even on earth, eating meat was never the plan of God. When God created Adam, Adam was not created to eat meat. He was created to eat fruits. Fruits. He had to live on fruits. In heaven, you don't eat because you are hungry. The food in heaven imparts you a dimension of God's life and knowledge. That's what they call it, the fruit of life. You eat it, it gives you life. It gives you wisdom. There are fruits you eat in heaven, you become wise. That is why some of you, oh, the kid that has come behind. Angels have come to you and give you food in your dream. You wake up and you bind them. I know, I deny that chop. And they said, no, no, may I give you? And they chop them. <laughs> oh my God. But the truth is this. How do you discern that the food you eat in a dream is from God? Because there is food in a dream which is demonic food. But the food from God, it is always apple. Listen to me. Not apple, sorry, fruit. If you eat fruit in your dream, it's not satanic. Stop binding God. Number two, bread. It's not demonic. They are symbolic of communion, my friend. Those of you who have bound God, repent in the name of Jesus. Ha. I want to show you a mystery. First Kings 19, verse 5. It. Then as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. An angel. This is Grand Elijah chopping in his dream. Or oh, in the spirit. Angel gave him food. Then he looked and there by his head was a cake of big coals and a jar of water. Are you seeing? If you drink water in your dream, it's a very good dream. Water. It's a very good dream. And if you wake up and thank God. It means you have drank from the fountain of heaven. If you eat fruits, wake up and celebrate. If you eat eru, <laughs> we meet straight. Now this is it. When you eat in your dream, it's simple. Don't eat to 12 in the afternoon, the thing will expire on you. Most often, when they give you food in your dream, it does not activate to you eat the same food on earth. That is why if they give you arrow in your dream, the next day somebody will bring you arrow. The person is innocent, understand me, but they need it to activate it. So if you keep yourself to 12, and they give you food, don't eat to 12, it will expire. Because that food they put in you, by tw it will expire by 12. But Langano will leave you now. I'm a chop. I'm a chop. Let's go back to the scripture, please. <laughs> then he looked and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. So this is between 6 p.m., 5 to 6 p.m. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and said, Eat, arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. Now, the food Elijah ate, he, he walked for 40 days without eating. 40 days without eating anything. You eat bread in your dream, the best is fruits. How many of you have eaten eat a fruit in your dream? You are blessed. That's what I'm looking for. Not sleeping and you, you are seeing quack in your dream. Why can't you be eating quack in your dream? What is crazy? Some people eat in their dream until they tell the person I eat meat in their dream. <laughs> I just I like meat. Eh? <laughs> now, this is because. Do you know that God came, came to give food to Peter in a dream? Peter refused. When your spirit is awake, they can't feed in your dream. Eating or having sex in a dream is a first sign that your spirit is sleeping. That is why in every dream of sex, they, you only have consciousness in the dream when you're already in the act. You don't know when you remove your dress. You don't know how that part arrives. Even of eating, it's just the way the children say I'm up. You don't know that we go to the party. <laughs> Just not tell me. I saw big, big meat. 
God punish the devil. So in this watch now, you offer yourself to God. And above all, I told you, the angel of good news comes at this hour. Papa Gabriel. Well, I call him Papa because he's a grand. But I shouldn't call that God is the only Papa. Let's assume our grand friend, Gabriel. He comes at this hour. Gabriel is a man. Don't look at me like that. He does not have wings. He's a man. We're already there. Daniel said, and I saw the man, Gabriel. Your trouble is that you think that angels have wings. Not all angels have wings. 90% of angels don't have wings. Read the whole Bible. Anytime an angel came, they didn't have, have wings. But there are some that have wings. The word angel means messenger. There are many. You have cherubim. You have seraphim. You have warring angels. There are many of them. But when it comes to heaven, the one that announces God's purpose on earth is Angel Gabriel. He came to Daniel. He came to Mary. He came to Zechariah. He came to me too. And he has come to you many times. You don't know it was him. But that since your mind was low, in coming in your dream, you used my face. And he told you, you will go to America. He said, I guess on Jay, Prophet Kevin, this will go to America. It's not Prophet Kevin, it's Angel Gabriel. When you mature in the spirit, he comes with his own face. You don't have to be using face. All right? I'm done.